So first of all, I want to shout out Phil Taggart's podcast. He's got some great guests on there that I'll never be able to get and some interesting interviews. This clip of Johnny Burrell talking about the Libertines caught my eye, as there seems to have been somewhat of a myth surrounding his involvement with the band, and he doesn't seem to talk about it very much. So it's good to hear the full and really, really accurate story as he puts it. Probably is. Let me think about this. I want to be really, really accurate. I was on tour with the Alabama Three. That was it, yeah. Yeah, and I had um, I w- I'd never planned to do to play in the Libertines for long. Mm-hmm. I I loved the band, and they were like you know my my friends. You know, I we were you know we were sort of a gang of very close friends, and I really loved what they were doing. But I always wanted to do my own thing. And um, John, who you know uh, was a big friend of mine, we've known each other for a long time. Um, uh, he'd said to me, look, I think the band isn't going anywhere. Pete, Peter and Carlos are like, they're kind of losing it. And, you know, what should I do? I don't really feel like doing the band anymore. And I was like, well, just do whatever you want to do. And he was like, and he left the band. And then, like, I was off doing other stuff. And then they had, like, a gig that was suddenly really, really important. And they were like, look, can you just come in and play bass? And I was like, and Gary had come in on drums. And I said, yeah, I'll come in and fill in for a couple of gigs, right? But, mm-hmm. you know, John left the band and he's my mate and I'm not going to, do you know what I mean? I'm not going to do it long term, you know? But Peter had had this, it's all linked because they'd got, he'd, Peter had gone and seen the strokes and he'd decided that he, the way he was going to make it was to try and get, but um, the thing he got from it, this is when he got Steve to sing in the band. But he wanted, he thought, if he gets the, if he gets all his best looking friends in a band, then it would be more like The Strokes. So that was kind of the game plan. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's canny. It is canny. Yeah, yeah. But that didn't quite. It didn't work out. It didn't pan out that way. But anyway, so I, so literally, I wasn't like, I wasn't dialed up John because you know he'd kind of left the band and he was my mate as well. So I was like, look, I'll come and I'll do a couple of gigs, and then. I'd got a gig. I was really, really into, you know, I was, I was, I was doing my own thing where I felt like, I sort of felt like Lead Belly and The Clash were the same thing. Yeah. But no one else in the world understood that. Mm-hmm. So I was doing these shows on my own that were kind of like punk gospel. I don't know, blues. <laughs> I don't really know how to put it. And um, I was getting pretty good at that. And then out of the blue... What's his, um, oh, sorry, boy, oh, what's his name? Um, Rob Sprague from, from Alabama, the Reverend Larry Love is his name. So was, was he Larry Love? Anyway, um, yeah, he was. And he, he came and saw me play and he said, we want you to come on stage and at the end of our show and play the Midnight Special. And they've got this gospel choir and they're going to sing it along with you. Come and do it on tour every night. Wow. And I was like, yeah, man. So I went off to do that, you know. And then, yeah, the, I knew that there was this rough trade gig coming up. So I went to a payphone and I called Carl and I said, listen, I'm really sorry. I'm out on tour with the Alabama and I'm in Cardiff and um, I can't make the gig, you know. Well, I just felt like it was kind of like a thing, you know, like I said, I was going to come in and debt in the band yeah, for, of course. for a couple of gigs. Do you know what I mean? And uh-huh. then, then I was out on the road sort of with an opportunity concerning my own career, you know, because it, like, it wasn't like I was going to do the Libertines thing long term you know i would recommend listening to the whole clip and the interview as borrell is really candid about his relationship with libertines and his substance use in his early days it's interesting that he said he knew he wouldn't play long with the libertines and that makes sense given his relationship with john hassel and also his desire to do his own thing but what do you think would it have worked for him in the libertines or are you just thankful we got two of the biggest bands of the uk naughty scene out of it have your say in the comments